والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم بسم الله بسم الله الحمد لله السلام عليكم peace and blessings be upon you and welcome to this week's edition of the Beauties of Islam. We have a website called beautiesofislam.com. I hope you'll visit the site, check out some of the programs like this, and take the opportunity to learn more about what we're talking about, these beauties of Islam. My name is Yusuf Estes, and I will be talking today about the continuing uh, relationship that we have as human beings with the various aspects of our ahwal, the things around us. One of the things I want to talk about again is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And today we find a, a strange thing amongst some of the Muslims believing that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is still alive, that he speaks to them or comes to them in visions. And so I want to talk about that a little bit and uh, determine exactly what is the relationship Muslims today have with our Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. In fact, it is known, well known, that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, died at the age of 63, and he was buried, and he's uh, still buried in the same place in Medina in Saudi Arabia. Now, what about those people who will tell us that, well, no, but, you know, he talks to me. Well, there are other religions, too, where people claim that they're hearing voices and things that are being said to them by their God or their prophets or by something. But in fact... The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him himself, told us some very important information. He said to us that there will be no new message will come. No new prophet is going to come and no new message is going to come. There's not going to be any more revelation after him. So the Quran is the last and the final of all revelation. He did tell us that Jesus, peace be upon him, would come back. Jesus Christ will come back. He told us that. But not as a new prophet and not with new revelation. He also told us that and listen to this real careful because this is the hadith that he told us. And he says to us that the devil, the shaitan, cannot take his form in a dream. So if you see him in a dream, then it was really him. And then he really said that. Now, what did he mean by that? Well, some of the scholars have told us, in fact, that this is, this is for the benefit of those people who knew him, who knew what he looked like, and knew him at the time, and they had seen him so they would know who, what he looked like. But how would it be today if somebody said, well, I saw him in a dream, but you never saw him before, so how would you know that that was him? So that's one of the discussions that people are having about our prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. But in any case, I will tell you without a doubt, Today, our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is with us in a special way. How? Is by his hadith, his teachings, his sunnah, which is very clear to us. Very clear to us. As Muslims, we know it exists and we can follow it. And this can be something very good for us. All of us, we love the Prophet Muhammad so much. We say after his name, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Peace and blessings be upon him. This is something every Muslim should say after they mention Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But now, <clears throat> what is it we really want? And for me, I think I understand it rather well that the Prophet Muhammad told us that he is going to be in a part of the paradise called Jannatul Firdaus al-Allah. This means the highest and the highest of the highest heaven. And that he is going to be there and it's the closest to all of the other prophets. He's going to be in the proximity of the other prophets of the prophet David, the prophet Adam, the prophet Abraham, and prophet Moses, and prophet Suleiman, and prophet Noah, prophet Luke, prophet Ayub, Job. All of these prophets, peace and blessings be upon all of them. This is the proximity where Prophet Muhammad is going to be. Now, do you want to talk about you saw him in a dream here? Or do you want to talk about being with him in reality in the next life? And I think this makes the most sense. And it helps us really to put some other things in perspective too. You see, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was insistent when he told us, do not eulogize me. Don't raise me up and make me something that I'm not. 
eulogize is the word we use in English for the word he used in Arabic. Don't make me bigger than what I am. I'm nothing more than what? And he said, I'm nothing more than a slave of Allah, a worshiper of Allah, and just a simple messenger. I'm a human being like you. This is what he was telling us. And yet today you have people who are trying to make him something that he, is, that he never said he was. Trying to make it like he's floating around in the air, that he is in this place and he's in that place and speaking to people from behind rocks and all, who knows what. So when we hear these kinds of things, we as Muslims should be responsible to say, hey, wait a minute, this is not reality. This is just something that you're coming up with. This is something that you're saying and doing that that really has no basis in Islam. It, we don't find a teaching for that. In, find, in, in fact, we find that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, denied any kind of superpowers or supernatural existence, that he was, in fact, a human being. And, in fact, he did have a shadow. And there are those who are out here saying, well, he didn't have a shadow. And why would you say something like this? Why would people make up these things? Well, I can understand that you have a great a, a love and affection for our prophet, peace be upon him. But you know what? When you really love somebody, what should you do? And Allah told us in the Quran clearly about it. So let's think about this and we'll go to break. And the meaning of it? Say to them, Muhammad. When they say they love Allah, if you really love Allah, then you should do what? You should be following me. Follow me. Then Allah will love you. He'll forgive your sins. He's a forgiver. The merciful. Stay right there. Don't go away. We're going to be right back after this break. And we'll continue talking about this important subject about our relationship with Muhammad. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why did I start with that? Well, the last words I said when we went to break was Muhammad. And then I'm saying now peace and blessing be upon him. Because it happens that Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us how important it is for us to say these words after his name. And this is not a joke and this is not exaggeration. This is real. One time, <clears throat> the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was with his companions, and he stepped up, you know, like on a, some steps. He stepped on the first step. He said, I mean, he moved to the next step, and he said, I mean. Then he went to the top step, and he said, I mean. And he came back down. I said, uh, what's that? <laughs> they didn't understand what's going on. He said, oh, you didn't know. The angel Gabriel had come to me, and he was saying something, and after each thing I said, I mean. One of the steps that he stepped on is when the angel Gabriel said to him, that is curse of Allah, the Allah's, it's called lanat Allah, which means the curse of Allah is on the one who doesn't take care of their parents when they get old. And as a result, they wind up, they go to hell and the curse is on them because of their bad treatment of their parents. I said, Amin. And another one he said, when he took one of the steps, the angel said to him, the curse, lanat Allah, on the one who goes through Ramadan and he doesn't get Allah's mercy. It means he didn't fast Ramadan, he didn't stay away from food and drink and so on. He just treated it like any other month. And a curse of Allah on him, I said, Amin. He said, and then the other step he took is when he said, the angel comes to me, Jibril, you know, Gabriel, and said to me, a curse is on the one. Who, when he hears your name, he doesn't say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
And I said, Amin. From this we learn that it's important when you say Muhammad, you say peace be upon him, or sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or wa salat wa salam. This means that you're asking for Allah's uh, peace for him. Now, what's important about that? Because every time you do it, he, peace be upon him, is also making sure to make dua for you too. Because on the day of judgment, it's Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his prayers for those who are in the hellfire, for them to get out. Which brings us to a very interesting subject about one of the beauties of Islam. And I just want to touch on this just for a second let you think about it. Do you know in Islam, we don't believe that all Muslims necessarily go to paradise. And we don't believe that everybody else just goes to hell automatically either. No, we don't. In fact, we know that anybody who believes there's only one God and they're worshiping him to the best of their ability, according to what they know, they'll find their reward with their Lord. This is true of the followers of Moses the knew him and followed him, they went to paradise. The followers of Abraham, the followers of Noah, the followers of David and Suleiman, and certainly the followers of Jesus Christ, peace and blessing be upon him, any of them that recognized his teaching, la ilaha illallah, there's only one God to worship, and they followed him to the best of their ability, they would be successful in this life and the next life. And certainly that's true of Muslims as well. But at the same time, we're going to tell you that anybody who just says, I'm a Muslim, that isn't a guarantee for them. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, made it real clear. After one of his prayers, he turned to his companions and he said, nobody will enter paradise, illa, except by the rahmah of Allah. Nobody will enter paradise except by the mercy of Allah. They said, even you? He said, even me. So we see right away that it doesn't mean that we as Muslims are automatically saved. What it means is we as Muslims have a chance, have a chance because at least we know the right way and we should be acting on that. It's more of a responsibility on those who know than those who don't know. One of the things Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said was that if any of the Jews and Christians hear about me, know about me, know about the message I've been sent with and don't accept that, then they'll be amongst the losers. They'll go in the fire of hell. Now what does that mean? It's clear. If anybody hears the message, the message is there's only one God. Worship him and accept that and understand that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is bringing that message. If you understood it and then you rejected it, of course, it makes sense. So the teaching in Islam isn't that by being a Muslim you automatically are saved. As a matter of fact, it's very clear that in Islam that even the scholars of Islam can go to hell. Yes, because Allah will start the fire of hell with those who preached Islam, but they didn't live it. And the people will say to them in the hellfire, Oh, so-and-so, you were always preaching about Islam. He said, Yeah, but I didn't live it. I didn't do it. I told everybody else. So we ask Allah to save us from that. And... Again, I want to go back and capsulize this short little episode of the beauties of Islam by mentioning that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was nothing more than a human being, but he was the greatest of human beings. He was nothing more than a messenger, but he was the best of the messengers. He was nothing more than a human man, and at the same time, he was the best of all of them. We don't want to overstate it, but we don't want to understate it. And when we mention his name, we say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we have more about this on another one of our websites. Usually we just mention our main website, but I'm going to tell you this one. It's called Muhammad A to Z. You might want to check it out. And also, talking about websites, don't forget our website, beautiesofislam.com. Till next time, peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum wa Islam is peace, Islam is ease, Islam is peace.